That's right. Well, the Humane Society has been in the news lately, and I actually decided we needed to sit down and talk to Karen Petty today. She's the Executive Director of the Humane Society of Greenwood, and believe it or not, Gracie is in the room with us, and she's just laying down over there. Isn't that amazing? I know. You kept saying, now behave, behave, and that's the most well-behaved I've seen Gracie any time I've been here. It's kind of frightening, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> amazing what three years up. Get over Good. there. <laughs> Good job, Ann. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully it'll last. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Karen, how are you doing today on this nice frigid day? Doing much better than yesterday's frigid windy day. Yeah. Today is much more manageable. I can honestly, not to start out with a damper, I could just hear the dogs howling. I mean, you can only protect them so much when they're outside. It's so frustrating. But, you know, now with the weather hopefully taking a turn, the sun shining, that's going to make a big difference. High of 54 today, Karen. That's awesome. Low of 30 tonight. That's, well, okay. <laughs> we are not out of the woods yet at <laughs> night. You know, which brings us to another thing about our pets and everything. You need to really consider, are, is it too cold out there for them? You know, for a lot of them it still is. It doesn't matter if they have a lot of hair. If they're older, if they tend to be kind of skinny and unhealthy anyways, they can't handle the cold temperatures just like people can. And they need to come inside, or you need to provide them a space where they're kept out of the inclement weather. Sure. So uh, that's one thing to consider. Hopefully, yes, maybe by the end of this week we'll be out of this well, uh, weather. I think it didn't, wasn't November pretty temp temperate? Is that the right word? It was pretty mild, and so I think we're kind of getting backlash from having a very extended fall. Well, uh, Paxitani Phil, is uh, his life is in jeopardy. I heard he got fired. <laughs> he got fired. Good time. Some people beheaded him, too. <laughs> Poor guy. I mean, and, and I love the story that his handler misread the signals, that it's really the handler's fault. See. I don't know. What can you do to a handler? Can you behead a handler? Um, I guess we'll find out since it's just today's breaking news. But <laughs> that was a true animal lover. He's taken one for the animal. That's right. Exactly. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, there was some, uh, you had to go in front of county council to mm -hmm. see about getting some funding. In fact, uh, somewhere around $31,000 is what wow. you need. That's, uh, why? Well, that's a good question. This is the first time since 2007 that we've actually had to ask for additional funding. How we've made up the shortfall year after year with Humane Society money. And I think that one of the biggest misunderstandings, and if people can really understand this and, and grasp it, the shelter is a county function. If the Humane Society had not been hired under contract to run the shelter, it would be staffed with county employees and be its own department. So it's really the burden of the county, based on the contract and the nature of our relationship, that they are to fully fund shelter operations. And for, you know, all these years it really hasn't been to the extent of what is necessary so the Humane Society has been subsidizing the shortfall of funding we're not out there touting that we have a great relationship with the county we want to maintain that and I feel more now than ever more encouraged that we will be able to get the funding so what we can do with our money and that you help us raise as well sure is to get ahead of the problem we should be out there helping get spay and neuter done we should be able to help people who maybe don't have the means to keep their pet warm. Let's get them. We should put our money out there in the community and get ahead of the problem so the animals don't get brought to the shelter. However, the last 10 years, we've been able to do that up to a scant bit. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is a lot of reactionary um, strategies because it's, it's, I told them at the council meeting, it's sort of like in the sinking ship or the sinking boat and all you have is a small... Dixie cup to, to get the water out and that, that's all we've been doing and, and patching up the problem so we're not getting out ahead of it and that's what I feel the Humane Society's mission should be. We run the shelter I think better than anybody could which is why the county wisely invited us in 2002 to do it for them and I think it was the one of the smartest things they could have done in terms of animal welfare in the community. So with that being said, I, I know there were some people that when they read the headline that we were bailed out which I feel was really misleading and not accurate because that would be the county bailing themselves out <laughs> okay you know what I'm saying <laughs> right it wasn't us it's their shelter and they took the responsibility and I applaud them for doing that I really appreciate that they you know they asked a lot of good questions but without hesitation they're like we need to help them continue uh, we're not getting the free food supplies we used to get which were thousands of pounds why well the economy what where that food comes from is from manufacturer overruns their donations have dropped, you know, just out of the goodness of 
ABC Acme Pet Food Company, they just can't give like they wanted to in the past. You know, well, I would say, they, you said it was overruns. I say they're running a whole lot closer to the belt. They're not it. doing the runs. They're not anticipating the product going up. They're actually anticipating it going down. You, you're very smart. That's exactly what it is. So the supply of food that was being donated doesn't exist anymore. So the Pedigree Shelter Program um, went by the wayside. But what they did, because they didn't want to leave the shelters hanging, was they teamed up with an agency called the Rescue Bank. And it developed out of Hurricane Katrina, where there was such need down in that area to help feed pets. This charity developed, and it was so successful at getting food for the people who had pets and the homeless pets that it spread out to the whole country and became its own gigantic charitable wow. organization. They're based in Houston, and they have different distribution points throughout the country. Ours that we tie in with is in Tennessee. They have no food to even give. Food is just simply not coming in. So we haven't received the normal large pallets of food like we have since 2005, since August of last year. The food has literally dried up. It, the, the pantry is empty, literally. So that's something we never face. Now we do get broken bag food from Walmart, and we always have, and Food Lion as well. And other, of course people do bring us food, and when we put out pleas and requests for help, people step up and help. But it caught, and this is really on the conservative side. It probably side it costs us about a hundred dollars a day to feed all the animals at the shelter. So 365 days a year, because doggone it, they want to eat every day. It's thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. And like I said, that's the conservative side, and we've never really had to pay it. We've maybe paid fourteen hundred dollars a year, and that's for specialty foods mm -hmm. like puppy, or when we went, ran low on kitten chow. But we've always had food. This is the first time in our history of operating the shelter we've had this challenge. Wow. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Karen Petty. Hey, if you've got a question for Karen, don't hesitate to pick up that phone, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Oh, that's right. We are right back here. We have Karen Petty with us here this morning. She is the Executive Director of the Humane Society of Greenwood. You know, a lot of a lot of question came out of that article about the 31000 um, that was needed to keep the shelter going. One of the things you and I were just talking about off air is the fact that if the county, if you, if y'all were not there, what would happen to the animals? I mean, seriously, well, what would happen? Well, to be to be blunt and frank, and I believe the county would agree because they don't have the same resources afforded to them as we do as a nonprofit. More animals would be euthanized, and as an open intake facility, we actually have the highest live release rate we've ever experienced, and that's thirty eight percent. 38% of the animals that come to the county facility are going out alive to new homes, return to owners, uh, rescues, which go to new homes. Sure. Didn't you get Gracie from a rescue? Sort of. I mean, it was from a personal. That's right. Okay. Yeah, well, you're familiar that you, in this day and age with the overpopulation, you have to go outside the box. It's right. not like the Jones family comes in and picks out the kitty all the time. That's not getting them out. There's too many coming in. So shelters are having to be very resourceful. Now, going back to your original question, with that being said, not to begrudge anybody who would be a county employee, I believe any everybody there, they wouldn't work there if they didn't have a heart for animals. Sure. But they wouldn't have the resources that we do to get them out alive. So and we might not have a humane society if it wasn't for the, we could have one, but it might not be as, the melding, the melding of the two together right. is what really brings this success together. Right. And I would say what, you know, if, if for whatever reason the county asked us to no longer manage it or we chose to no longer manage it, we would go back to doing what we would do, which is programs and community outreach, which we do, I think, to a big degree still, but I can't, but we're spending so much of our time and effort trying to keep the shelter functioning financially that it's, it's keeping us from even running the capital campaign. Sure. We can't get out, I mean, you're asking the community for money for this and money for that, and they're like, well, wait a minute, I only got this much, pick one or the other. It's sure. like, well, we need to take care of our immediate need. You know, we've been gung-ho about the new facility for three years. Yes. Well, the last, and as we tried to get out and get it going, we kept getting pulled back because there was no money I to run the that. shelter. Sure, I understand that. You know, you, and, and in this economy, it makes it very, very, very difficult. It added a twist, did it on? And, you know, you were just, we were talking about before the food. I just wanted to direct that. But we were talking about the food issue. This is a direct function of the economy. Because if the food companies were doing well and they were cranking out the food, 
they would be what? They'd have overruns, they'd have overstock, it would end up in all these different places, and y'all would not be in the, in the pickle that you are right. for, for having to right. buy food now. Now, we did have a question come in about SPF out there. Do, mm -hmm. do you get any donations from them? Yes, and I want to remind people, they don't actually make pet food. They make the flavoring that goes on pet food. But what they do bring us, and thank, I thank them, is the leftover test product that's already been flavored. So it's a blending of certain brands of foods, and we do get that, and that certainly does help. One of the challenges we have is, and you may know this from your dog, you need to find a diet that works and keep it consistent. If you start monkeying around with a pest diet, you can have all kinds of messes. And in our facility, you don't know if their upset belly is from the food or maybe there's some other issue going on, and we don't have the money to run a bunch of tests on animals. So one of the things you can do is provide a steady, consistent diet. Right? Exactly. So, you know, we're, we're going back in the days of when we first started running it is we're having to blend a bunch of brains of food together because that's better than nothing. Sure. So what we're doing is um, asking the community if they want to bring us food. We're, we've kind of decided as a, as a company to stick with Purina mm -hmm. because it's very common. Most A lot of people use that to feed their house, household pets, and it's affordable. And so that way we're somehow providing some consistency of diet to the, the dogs and the cats. So if somebody wanted to buy some dog food, you'd recommend the Purina? Right, right. Yeah, just regular adult and kitten for cats and dog and puppy for the dogs. Yeah. We want to keep it simple. Yeah. Well, the, these are issues that, uh, you know, you can't get around. Yeah, you, you, you got to feed them. You got to feed them. But I tell you what, feeding Gracie some days, I mean, when I run out of food, you know, I may be out of food, but, you know, the <laughs> dog is going to eat. <laughs> I'm looking at two giant bags right here on the floor of your office here. I know, I know. But see, that's just part of it. She, she really likes rotisserie chicken oh. and rice uh -huh. and throw in some green beans. She's a happy camper. And then throw a little pumpkin in, and she's in heaven. When do you serve this meal, Anne? I would like to enjoy. That's what Jeff says. And he goes, the dog eats better than I do, Anne. And I said, would you like me to just put it together a bowl and throw it on the table? I can do that for you, honey. Yeah, you can make it for the one, make it for two. Well, I have to say her coat is simply gorgeous, and it's doing her well. She looks extremely healthy. Thank you. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. We, well, you know, she is a model. <laughs> she is. Super. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about the shelter. We're talking about the fact that, um, actually, you told me I think you were going to go try to finalize what you were with the 31000 with Toby Chapel, our yes, county manager, yes. today. Right. I, I have to, I need to give kudos to him. He, you know, he didn't know anything about this relationship with the with us, and he's done a lot, and he's he's been a really nice gentleman. I enjoy working with him. Sure. Uh, we've had him on the show. He, yeah, he's uh, a nice guy. I really he, like him. Yep, he is. Now, just for the record, so what all do you need the money for? Just for food or? Well, no. If you look across uh, payroll, everything, you name it, you know, everything, of course, costs go up. Medicines have gone up. And, and for the pets. <laughs> in the the pets for the shelf. My medicine is going up, <laughs> Anne. Um, well, I wanted to talk about that because that is the subject you brought up. It yeah. is. And I'll tell you, we talked about this off air as well. In the old facility, and I've invited Anne to come to her. Uh, pretty much it's a given at this point in time that building is, I would call it a sick building. And anyone who tours it, any question of why an animal would get sick, if it came in healthy, it goes out the window. Because when you see what they're having to be housed in, it's an old facility. It's like 30 years old. You can't get around it. And the amount of abuse, those, those cages and those walls and everything, the floors, you know, you can't expect, expect any building to go, yeah, we're good. So there's diseases and germs that even stay in the walls. It's cinder block. No matter how much you scrub it and disinfect, it is what it is. Beyond that, the stress on the animals weaken their immune system. So you have younger animals, older animals, unhealthy animals, starved animals. They already have a suppressed immune system. So just like daycare, if one of them comes in sneezing or coughing, those that are going to be vulnerable are going to catch it. So. We have been using a very inexpensive antibiotic called doxycycline. It's very common in animal shelters. It's very affordable. You can get 500 capsules for $20. Well, the product is completely off the market back order. And it's also an antibiotic that's used for people. So even humans, humans can't get it. So the only, the what's available is now $134 for 500 capsules. So that, and there was no like warning of back order. It was just back order. So all the vet clinics are going. How come it's back order? I don't know, and I want a full investigation. 
That has been my question. Like, what happened? I don't know. Too cheap? Uh, too cheap? Maybe. $20? It was too affordable and helpful, golly. No, I really don't know. That has been my question, and no one can seem to answer it. We've even Googled it, and there's no good answer. No good answer. No, but it's affecting vets' offices here as well, so it's not just us. It's, it was a very reliable medicine and now we don't have it and in order to keep the an to make the animals adoptable they have to stay healthy so you know we're having great success with cats at PetSmart and even through the are still the animal or the adoption center and you got to keep them healthy and, sure. and you don't want to send an animal sick out there in the well, world. Well no, it's not responsible to move them to PetSmart or the adoption center have them infect the others so that's been a big burden and that was completely unexpected and that's just sort of you know typical for right now with like you said, the economy is just throwing... I feel like I'm in this video game that I don't like. It keeps, you know, you think you're trucking along and yoo -hoo, and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, and it throws, you to know... To the next level and yeah, puts it's you like, back. I can't get to level three. I've been <laughs> thinking I'm going to get there. Yeah, I mean, it really, it's just like any other business, but we're dealing with loving, living creatures. We're not dealing with boxes of widgets that just you put in inventory and leave. You sure. Know? And the demand for our services is going up as the economy worsens as well. Um, hmm. So uh, that's that's one issue. But you were even talking about uh, health insurance. You had to bring that up, Anne. Yep, I did because it's part of the whole economy. It is. Well, you know, we provide benefits for our full-time employees, as any business does, and uh, our insurance went up twenty percent. But wait a minute, Obamacare hasn't started yet. Something did. <laughs> Some kind of care, which didn't seem too caring towards uh, businesses, <laughs> happened. Um, so I have to say I'm not really pleased with that. You know, anyway, that's a whole. We can have a whole hour and a half day long discussion on that. But that's something that people wouldn't even think about. You know, we're not the pound. We're a business. Sure. I can't stress that enough. If you want to be successful, you need to run it like any other business, and we do. And people think we're just in there hosing out kennels and we go home, and it's so far from that. We provide a service to the community. We have to maintain records of every single animal that comes in because what if Gracie shows up? Absolutely. And I don't see it, and, and I won't know that that's you know, your dog because I'll be in another part of the shelter. You know, we have to keep records of everything, and we have customer service training. I mean, we are a business. Absolutely. Hey, we're talking with Karen Petty, who is the executive director of the Humane Society of Greenwood. News is up. We'll be back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box. Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We are right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. Yes, I'm Ann Eller. Yes, I'm here with Karen Petty, Executive Director of the Humane Society of Greenwood. You know, part of, just to recap what we're talking about here, the Humane Society is actually a agency underneath uh, the um, county council. It's part of county business. For the shelter. For the shelter, right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So um, <clears throat> when you look at the money that is being paid out here, <clears throat> There have been many, many, many years where that hasn't been necessary, but due to the economics, and unfortunately, it always hits when everybody's economic po pocketbook is being hit. Yeah, we're a service that the need for it, seem, it increases as need in the community and, lo and uh, lower available, less available money hits. And, you know, we, we can't close down shop because we don't have business. We have too much business, and we need the funding to do it because pe it's a free service for people. If you live in Greenwood County, you know, the county provides that free service. If you, if you find a pet or you want to turn in your own pet, there's the shelter available for you. And that has to go to another issue there, Karen. I bet, uh, we're, uh, how is the uh, pets coming in? Are we having more coming in? Are people, I know for a time there, some people were turning their pets in because they just couldn't afford to feed them. And that still happens. That I think that will always kind of be the case. I think we've plateaued with that. What we're seeing and experiencing more is, and you've probably seen some of these in the news, more seizures of multiple animals at one time. And it's a hard thing for our small shelter to handle a large influx of animals at one time. Sure. And, and the animal control is doing a fantastic job, and they need to continue to do that. But for us on our end, when we're already maxed out, it puts an additional burden 
Uh, and most of the times these animals are in ill health and they need extra attention. Sure, so that makes it tough. <laughs> right, that right. makes it tough. So um, what are you going to do about it? Um, well, Ann, I'll Hi, tell you. Just go ahead and lay it on me, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> well, to kind of, and this is an interesting background. I think this will help the community and, and uh, understand. If you look at funding for shelters in, throughout the state, well, first of all, let me back up. The Humane Society of the United States published uh, a document, a 100-page document about animal control services back in 2001. Mm -hmm. And they recommended a minimum in 2001, $4 per capita to go towards animal control and sheltering. Well, we're at 363 per capita and have been um, for several years. So that's, this is 12 years later. And compa we're, uh, compared to other counties, Newberry, ones where there's actually animal shelters, similar sure. to, to what we have here, Newberry, Anderson, Greenville, if you do per capita, we are funded the least of all of our sister shelters that have similar um, services and facilities. Sure. So this is educational for us too because we've never really done that and kind of figure, you know, where do we stand? Are we asking too much? Are we expecting too much? Well, we find out we're actually receiving the least amount of funding compared to our sister shelters. So I felt that was important for council to know as well, but, you know, and share that because, you know, if we, we're providing excellent services. People who work with us from out of state, they just laud us with compliments that we're able to do what we're doing with, so, with such little resources, and I applaud the staff for that. So, we're, so that's why we're going to the county saying, if we can get the funding that we should be getting next year, then we can pull back and put our efforts into, like I said, getting in front of the problem or trying to race ahead to reach the front of it. Whereas we're so far behind right now that it is going to be just spending money and spending money. Let's, let's try to fix it. So what's going to happen this year then? What's going to happen? You're going to start working on doing, uh, you, you should be getting this money. Mm -hmm. The council has said they would give you this money. So you'll be able to do what? You'll be working on fundraising? You'll right. be doing what type of things? Well, one of the things we want to do is get a Humane Society vehicle, a van, so that we can provide additional transport ourselves to take animals to low-cost spay-neuter facilities to get them you know, sterilized. That's something we've been wanting to do forever. McCormick has two vans and they can get grant money to do this. We need to get a vehicle and so we're exploring how we can afford to do that and that will also give us the opportunity to not use the county truck that we use to haul trash and use this new vehicle to take animals to adoption events like PetSmart and Petco and other locations throughout the town that invite us to come be a part of their event. So right now... Normally when you go, don't you have to load up a bunch of cars? Well that too. We have a staff, <laughs> listen to this, and today she's doing it, God bless her, every Tuesday our clinic manager loads up her own vehicle and of course she gets reimbursed for mileage and goes to Greenville Humane Society to get our adoption spayed and neutered, her own vehicle, and she's been doing this for two years. We need to have our own vehicle to afford us so much more freedom to do the kind of transport and help. And we can also transport animals to rescue points as well. Right now people are using their own cars or we're missing opportunities. So that's one thing we want to do is get a van. And then with that... What kind of van is it that you need? Um, Does it have to be a new van? Well, I would prefer because we're going to be... well. Fairly new, fairly new. not abused because this is not a abused, We're not an abused <laughs> van for the Humane yes. Society. I be, like it. <laughs> it can be pre-owned, and that would kind of go with our business because these are all pre-owned pets. But I, it needs to be able to handle putting a lot of miles, and it's just a cargo van, nothing fancy schmancy, something where we can load up the carriers, bungee cord them in so they don't fly around, and just get us from here to there. You know, nothing fancy. Okay. And so that's that's a big goal so that we can also help with, with a trap neuter release program for these feral cats so, so they're not out there reproducing. So there's a lot of things that we can do to, the van would afford us to tackle a lot of the programs we want to get involved with and be able to apply for grant monies because they want to know how you're going to sustain your program, right? Well, as long as the clinic manager lets us use her car, you know, that doesn't work. You've got to have a good strategy, a good sound plan. So, so somebody might be listening out there that might have a good used van that, and you would get a tax deduction, wouldn't you, for Oh, that? absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, something to think about out there, folks. If you've got a van out there, and it's a good-sized one that uh, is just basically a cargo van, maybe you should call Karen. Well, I think there's a lot of businesses in town that use those, and maybe they're ready to retire sure. their van. Um, then we would be lo we'd love to talk to them about it. Because if you could afford, if you could get a van like that, even if it needed some repairs or something, you could probably afford to do that because you didn't have the expense of 
purchasing the exactly bank. absolutely absolutely yeah so that we we have so many plans and the staff is just jonesing to be let loose if we if we get the funding we need oh my gosh Katie bar the door we'll be able to launch forward with this capital campaign and get to the place where we can build a new shelter that we need again and you're invited to tour the current facility anytime <laughs> you like okay all right and how about other people can they come out and see the yeah, facility? yeah we want to do that with oh, you're so smart Yes, um, the board really wants to have open tours. We have to kind of schedule it because it could be crazy in there one day, but that might be good too. We don't want anyone getting hurt. And we want to have small group tours available. I think that would be incredibly helpful for the community to understand. And if they have any questions, feel free to ask. We are so transparent and open book. Uh, you know, bring it on. So I, that's something we want to do um, when the groundhog gets it right. Yes. I mean, they can come out now. It's a little frigid, but... You know, when the weather gets a little bit warmer, we want to start doing that. Maybe Before it gets really hot. Yes. <laughs> or that's good experience, too, if you really want the reality. Right. Exactly. So um, people people should. And, you know, the Adoption Center is open. Mm -hmm. what, right. what days is that open? Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5. And coming out there to the Adoption Center, you're going to see animals, and you're going to see mm -hmm. a lot of what goes on there. Yeah, the Adoption Center is definitely a nicer part of the facility and it's a little bit more showcasey, and, and it works well for what we need right now. Sure. So <clears throat> we have the um, we have this issue out there at the Humane Society. They do need to start working on getting to that new place that they want to be. Now, as far as a place, do you have any ideas where you would be going, or have is there been any property or anything that? Well, we've had we've had a lot of offers for people wanting to sell property. And we were kind of hoping for donated property, but that hasn't panned out. What we're looking for is something visible, easy to access, and um, room for growth. And there are a couple spots that we are very interested in pursuing. Mm -hmm. I think once we kind of work out some of the things for next year's budget with the county and we get some of these things finalized, then we can get back on track with pursuing potential land uh, lo locations. Okay. All right. So the capital program is kind of shall we say, on hold right at this moment? Correct. Okay, until we get these emergency issues taken care of. Right. Okay. All right. Hey, I'm Ann Eller. I am right here with you with Karen Petty. If you've got a question, don't hesitate to give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We are right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. Hey, I was looking over the schedule here, Karen. looks like you're having a microchip clinic April 27th. We are. What, 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 what's, why should you do that? Well, it's great to put a, well, you should have identification on your pet because okay. if your pet gets brought to the shelter with no identification and you don't contact us, there's no way to reunite pet in person. Collars are great and, you know, they work, but a lot of times they do come off. Mm -hmm. Or if someone happened to have found your pet, wink, wink, they might take it off. Sure. So microchips are a permanent form of identification. And it's a very small size of a grain of rice chip that goes underneath the skin back between the shoulder blades. And there's a little device you scan it, just like at the grocery store where they scan the UPC code. And a number comes up, and that number will tie into you, the pet owner. Sure. So this is an invaluable service. Now, how much do we charge to do this? $15. $15. And that does include registration as well. And you, you do have to keep up with that, don't you, though, like it's a yearly fee or something? Well, no, no, no. There's a company that offers the free basic service, which is finding your pet right. and keeping your information in their database. Then they have what I call like the frills. That's the fee. If you want to participate in the frills program, okay. then you do pay a fee. But no, once it's microchip and your pet's registered, that's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Well, this is invaluable service that uh, you really need to check out. Now, when are you doing it? It's going to be on Saturday, April the 27th from, I think it's 10 to 1. Okay. And at, out at the shelter? Out, yes, I'm sorry. Out at the what we call the New Spay Neuter Clinic. And the no appointments is first come, first serve. Okay. Now, do you actually do spay neuter out there now? No. We, have, we participate in a transport program with Animal Allies Low Cost Clinic out of Spartanburg. And we have a van that they send down almost every other Wednesday. And early in the morning, and they schedule appointments. You bring your pet the morning up to the same, um, our old 
Oh, Anne, I need coffee. <laughs> to our new spay neuter clinic. Right. And it's sort of a bus stop, if you will. They load up the van, go to Spartanburg, and then the surgeries are performed up there, and the animals are brought back late that afternoon. You know, that is such a terrific service. And of course, here it is spring. We've got, I'm sure you've got lots of um, kittens and puppies and pregnant animals coming into the shelter, don't you? You are not kidding. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> It's crazy. This is a tough time for you guys. It really is because when they come in pregnant, it's such a dilemma. You know, it's, it's difficult. And they might come in early pregnant so you don't know. And then all of a sudden, you yeah. know, you go, oh boy. So what do you do? It's, well, if they get adopted, they're, they're fixed. You know, they're spayed or neutered, or they're spayed. And, you know, then that's not the problem. There's no problem anymore. If they don't catch it, like, there was one I was walking through and went, oh, she's giving birth. I mean, sometimes you just, you don't oh know. My God. <laughs> if it's a feral cat, there's not a whole lot you can do because you can't reach in there and do anything. Sure. So this is the time of the year where there's lots of kittens. And, of course, you do have a relationship worked out with uh, PetSmart. Right. Mm -hmm. PetSmart, we are a partner and, with PetSmart. Okay. And we, the cats that are in the condos over there are, are all from the shelter. And we've had really, really good success with adoptions from there. That's terrific. So what else? We were talking about missing pets. How do we go about uh, making sure that, you know, do they need to pick up the phone and call and see absolutely. If, you know, this Come is down, something we're missing? call, absolutely. I can't say it enough. The second your pet goes missing, you need to contact the shelter. Just this morning, two pets. Six o'clock in the morning, is that what you were telling me? Yeah, because I do my emails at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning. And I'm fielding emails, and they're one of the ones that was reported missing, a girl saw running down Mathis Road, so I'm shooting that email off to our staff to notify the pet owner. Another one got an email last night, their six-month-old chocolate that puppy was missing, found out we have it. If she hadn't contacted us, we would have this puppy not knowing who its owner is. And that happens time and time again. Don't wait a day. People will come in, oh, a month ago my cat went missing. That's not going to work. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's and you need, is it, let me, can I give the number? Sure. Okay, the number to the front office at the shelter to report a missing pet or any animal issue would be 864-942-8558. Don't be dismayed if you get the voicemail because if they're on the phone, it will go to voicemail. Please leave your information. You will get a returned phone call. Well, that, that, you know, that just means so much because you see the signs up all over a community, missing pet, missing pet. And you just wondered, did they already call the Humane Society and see if it is there? Now, you also have a Facebook page. Yes, we do. It's been, it's been very successful uh, in, many, in many respects. But that's another thing I wanted to mention. I will see on Facebook where people, they post a found, call us if you find a pet, too, because we might have a matching missing report, and we sure. can simply hook everybody up and be done with it. Um, but I'll see missing pets posted on Facebook, and my first question and post is, have you reported to the shelter? and half the time they haven't. So keep in mind, that's where most stray animals that are caught are brought. So that should be the first place you think to contact. And if it's not there now, it could get brought in later. And you keep a record. Yes, which, we do. Which brings me to another point. You told me you have to keep records on everything that happens there at the shelter. Correct. I mean, yes. pet comes in, pet goes out, all, all this type of stuff. Their weight, when they receive shots, their color, their markings, where they were found what cage number they're in, you know, you can't mess that up. you got to make sure you keep, once that animal comes in, its identity is clear from cage to cage as it's moved around. And that helps us so often to help reunite people with their pets, where the pet was found. And the more detailed information they give us, the better chance that we could possibly reconnect them. And there was another point, and it just went out my head. <laughs> I understand. It happens to me, too. This time. Gosh, I think it was good, too. <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back around to yeah. you. You know, um, and, and also your website. You, you post Ooh. pets that are for adoption and everything. You can go through there and at least get an idea. Right, and that I just remembered my point. Thank okay. you. Also on our website, we have a page of missing pets. So, for instance, if you report your pet missing, we're going to ask you to send us a photograph, and it's going to show up on well, cool. our page. So if you find a pet, look on there and see if the pet you found, we have a report for. Now, a lot of people don't have pets' photos. <laughs> I have lots. Can you even imagine? I can't I, even I can't imagine, imagine that. Yes. But, and we also have a page for stray animals. So if you're missing your pet, look at our stray animal page and see if it happens to be at our shelter. It could take up to 24 hours to get it uploaded. Sure. But we photograph every animal on intake because we want to help people get their pets back. 
You know, that really is terrific. And what is the website for? It's gwbhumanesociety.org. O-R-G. Absolutely. So we've got uh, spay, neuter uh, once a week, or is it once a week? No, it's about every other Wednesday. I, I have a phone number for people to call to get the pricing information and the next okay. scheduled date. It's Animal Allies in Spartanburg, and their number is 864-576-6971. And I guess if you wanted to take your pet up there, you could too. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, don't wait on us. <laughs> I are, mean, if you want to just there's enough ways, and and don't and I do have people say, gosh, if you're if you had your own clinic, we'd come there. Don't make us, don't blame us. There are so many low cost facilities around the upstate. You can certainly take your pet there. So um, make sure that you and maybe you'll leave me a copy of that, and I'll mention it every so often, so we can make sure everybody knows about it. Now you do have a couple of things coming up. The Chili's Golf Tournament on May 22nd at Hunter's Creek. That should be a good event. It, it's fantastic. This is the 11th one. Can you believe this? I, I feel old. It's successful. Every year, uh, Lowry Wilson, general manager of Chili's, does a fantastic job. He's been so supportive of our agency year after year, and we just have a great time. And we'll be offering sponsor or, um, golf signs for $50 sponsorship, and you can put whatever you want on the sign. We've made it really fun, and some of the things people have put are quite enjoyable. Okay. <laughs> It's kind of like Burma shave signs when you go from hole to hole. It's very humorous. So we've tried to make it fun and creative. Now, who, how do you get, if you wanted to do something like this, to contact you? Yes, yeah, so if they go it? to our website, we have our email address on there, and I get all the emails, and just let me know. It's $50 for a, I think it's a large sign, 18 by 24. It's very large. And they can have the sign when the event's over. Okay. And so, and they will print whatever you want on it? W within, within reason. reason. Yeah, I knew you were going to say within reason. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me a great, uh, actually redid, of uh, dogs saying they are sorry for all the things oh, they have done. And it is absolutely a hoot. I tell you what, I'm going to be posting some of those uh, on our website, uh, wcrs1450am.net. you got to see these. They're great. But um, Gracie could do a whole page of her own. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Karen, you know couple other things going on out there. What else would you like to get out there before we wrap well, this we up? Well, we will be having Camp Good Dog again this year, and that will be, uh, I think, June 10th through the 21st, and we, we have a very exciting program. We have a new uh, camp leader, and she actually is uh, a assistant professor at Lander for uh, PE, so she has all kinds of great ideas for helping teach children how to positively train the shelter dog. So we're very excited about that. I'll be putting and that information out there. And she probably will get them to do some exercise while they're doing Alice, it. Yep, <laughs> jumping jacks, everyone. <laughs> well, I did read an article not long ago that a working out with your pet was an excellent way for you and your pet. That It is, absolutely. I All should right. try it. <laughs> yeah, you should try it. All right. Well, Karen, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Number, if you need to call the shelter to find out if your pet is missing or you found one. 864 Nine four two eight five five eight. And if you want to uh, go out to the adoption center and see about getting a lifelong friend that will always be there for you, regardless of what happens, whether you want them there or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's that number? It's nine four two eight seven seven five. And the shelter, is, I mean, the uh, adoption center is open. Yes, it's open from ten to five, Monday through Saturday, and I'm looking at expanding hours to Sunday afternoon as well because of the springtime season. Because it's so darn nice. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many darn pets that need to be adopted. We need to be open more. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, Karen, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. Thank you, Anne, for having me. Absolutely. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.